materialists. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these guys were all part of the inner sanctum um, of the Fabian society, um, as well as is this other thing. So, like I said, there's a lot of overlap. And at one point, even just, to, just I'm Canadian and, and Canada was I, and still is, I think, a, an important uh, player right now at the moment in global affairs. So I'll just say this. One thing that's of interest here is that um, Lord Mackinder quit his job in 1908 at the London School of Economics, where he was the director under uh, Beatrice Webb appointed him. And he's the founder of modern geopolitics, as it is known today and as it is taught in Harvard and Yale and Oxford and other places, and as it is practiced since the Cold War, especially as this uh, science of geography, which all, I mean, that's at the heart of many of our problems is this this quasi-science, which is not really a science. Um, that's Lord Mackinder that, that, you know, the, that the, 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 the great game, I'll just say a word on this because people might not appreciate this. The great game of politics is organized around the assumption that, um, hegemon must always come out as the dominant singular force and the world is run by diminishing returns of resources and a fight for those ownership of diminishing returns of space on a finite um area of the globe right um and whoever can monopolize those resources can better induce the weaker to fight each other and stay subservient enslaved um to the master hobbesian sort of dominant uh class and there is a genetic racist uh tinge under the surface that i think you only are allowed to discover later on after you rise in the ranks and a lot of fabians i'll just say this now as well a lot of fabians are good people they're not upper level, they don't know what the hell they're a part of. And people within the British Labour Party and a lot of the Labour Parties that were created by Fabians themselves are just people who care about the justice of you know, the rights of labor against exploitative enterprises. They're not sure. bad. Uh, just I got to say that as a disclaimer, because I don't want to paint the whole thing as like one blob. But when well, you get to yeah. the, the Jesuits, you know, when you get to the upper level of the Jesuit order, there's lower level Jesuits who are really good people. They do a lot of good things. And then something happens along the way where you're periodically tested by your superiors. And no matter what your answers are at a certain point, as it gets weirder and weirder, um, whether you choose to drink the baby blood or not, you think you've passed the test. (laughs) Oh my God. I I chose something horrific. But you think that you've passed the test, but um, you get two different sets of experiences at that point. It's a very Masonic sort of structuring. Um, so I think something sort of happens there. too. It seems like something that's common in any of these sacred societies that people like to, to, you know, discuss in the context of their influence on, on the world today. Um, that there's, you know, the, the lower, I guess, to use Masonic terminology, like these degrees of initiation, these different, um, uh, these lower levels. And it's uh, a lot of the, uh, nasty stuff that comes out. Uh, from, you know, that that researchers like you are able to sort of pull out, um, you know, aren't really apparent to these lower level uh, members until they they rise up in the ranks. That seems like something that's uh, relatively common among these uh, organizations and is probably a structure that uh, ensures uh, their success, I, I would assume. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, secrecy is, is part of the game. Well, you also have members where people can be like, well, they can't all be bad, right? So, like, people that look at, I guess, the Fabian Society and are like, oh, so you're saying everyone in the Labor Party is a eugenicist? You know, you, you, you can use sort of reductionist uh, arguments uh, to sort of give yourself uh, an additional layer of, of cover, maybe. And the same with, you know, Masons and, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people oversimplify to the point of stupidity and they, they miss the nuance. They miss the richness of actually how history happens by doing that. Yep. Um. On both extremes, right? The whole I don't believe in any conspiracy side of things or everything is a conspiracy side of things, like, uh-huh. like Club Burden. You know, you both sides, you miss you miss all the drama. Um, but uh like yeah, like these guys would and I'll I'll get back to Lord Milner quitting his job, but like the thing about these guys, they profess themselves to be like socialists and they they utilize certain Marxist terminology and stuff, but they're really just they only they they disdain the masses, they disdain labor. They actually are just using it as sort of like an attractive honey to attract people who are being abused in unjust economic systems um, to conglomerate and weaponize thus a groupthink, right? And utilize the masses um, in ways that really just justify a restructuring of the society with no benefit to the masses whatsoever. They ultimately want to create a system where there is a, a destruction of the me- 